Today on Cruise Man's Garage, I'm going to give you my first impressions of this brand new Garmin XT GPS. Let's take a look at what comes in the box of this new Zumo XT. Now the first thing you see is the XT unit itself which we will remove and set off to the side. I like the size and the feel of it. And then as we pull this uh, packaging out, let's look down in here and see what comes with the kit. We have some instruction manuals, both an installation and a quick start owner's manual. This is the wiring harness that goes from the unit down to the battery. Let's see, we also have some other uh, RAM ball mount accessories here, which uh, will fit just about any motorcycle. It does come with a USB cable where you can hook it to your computer. Uh, this is the mounting cradle, and there are some other accessories related to the mounting cradle that also come in the box, uh, like the screws and washers and other hardware. And then a few uh, cable ties that you can use to tie up your cables. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this brand new Garmin uh, Zumo XT GPS. This is their newest model. And I just unboxed this yesterday and been taking a look at it. Now I want to give you kind of my first impressions. Now this is not going to be a full in-depth review because I haven't had a chance to use this out in the field yet. But I have been doing some studying up on it, and I just want to give you some first impressions and talk about how it compares to my uh, 595 LM and how it might compare to those of you if you're riding a Honda Goldwing, a 2018 Plus Goldwing, uh, how it might compare to that. So let me just give you an overview of the look of, the, of this new unit and tell you a little bit first impressions. The first thing you notice, especially comparing it to this Zumo 595, you'll notice the 595 has a matte finish screen. It's kind of a dull matte finish. And I'm sure that was done uh, to help reduce glare when you're riding out in bright sunlight. Whereas this XT model has a very shiny screen, almost like a cell phone. So in fact, it's not much thicker or bigger than a cell phone. So it's a pretty nice looking screen, and but it is a glossy, shiny surface. So it'll be interesting uh, as I test this to see how it uh, handles the reflectivity and the glare from the sunlight. Um, actually, I might have this turned around backward. This is the way it's supposed to go here. The little garment is on the left. Now, if we turn it around, you'll also notice before I turn it around, the screen is larger than it is on the 595. Uh, the XT has a five and a half inch screen diagonally, whereas the 595 has a five inch screen diagonally. So it's a half an inch larger screen area, viewable area. If we turn it to the back, you will notice uh, a little bit of a difference. It has a different cradle uh, mounting design uh, there are also five contact points on the back. Uh, I'm not sure why there's five contact points here because there's only two contacts on the cradle, but we'll look at the cradle here in just a little bit. Uh, on the back of this unit, you have a power button. You have a couple of waterproof flaps. One of them is to uh, cover up the USB cable. I found it kind of interesting that they went back to the old style uh, mini USB port as opposed to the micro USB port on the 595. And I guess I was kind of surprised they didn't use USB 3 on the newer model. But you can connect it to your laptop or to your home computer here and you can then update or download routes and tracks and things like that. The other flap is for the micro SD card, which I already have one mounted in here. 
uh, I found the method of installing the micro SD card to be a little bit clunky. Uh, it has this little metal door or metal hinged door that flips up and pulls back. It's very complicated. In fact, the first time I tried it, that little metal door actually fell off. It just came off. And without reading the instructions, I would have never figured out how to install this micro SD card. It just was not very intuitive. Whereas uh, on the 595, it was pretty easy, pretty simple. But these waterproof doors uh, are nice. They're nicely done, they're rubber, and they're, they seem to provide a very good seal. You also have a microphone, or a speaker, I should say, down here. And that's pretty much it uh, that's of what's available on this uh, model. Now, if we compare the back of this model to the back of the 595, you see the difference in the contact points. There's five compared to many. I don't even count them. I think there's 14 or 12 or something. There's a lot of them back there. And that's because the harness that came with the 595 had a lot of different things you could do. You could plug in an external microphone. You could plug in external speakers. Uh, it had its own USB port on the harness. Um, and so it had a lot more capabilities for somebody that maybe has a motorcycle that does not have Bluetooth or a Bluetooth headset. However, that harness was very difficult to install. If you've seen my video on installing this 595 on the Goldwing, uh, I ended up cutting off a lot of those connectors just because it was so many cables uh, that I would never use. And they did not offer an optional harness. Basically, I just needed to power it up. So the 595 is a little bit simpler design. You have the same rubber flap system here uh, to cover up that micro SD, I'm sorry, uh, micro USB port. And then you have a door on the back on this model that you actually remove to get access to the battery. And then underneath the battery, is where you'll find the USB. I'm getting USB and micro SD confused today. There is a micro SD card slot right here, and you simply push it in and it locks in place, which is more of a typical style of SD installation. Now, I don't see a way on the XT to get access to the battery. I do see a series of little screws all the way around. So perhaps you have to physically take this apart to replace the battery. I don't even know if the battery is replaceable. I haven't checked on that yet, but I will and report back to you. So if we turn this unit on by pressing the power button, you'll get a feel for how long it takes to start up. And I compared this to the 595, and it's pretty similar. It's a little bit faster, but it's pretty similar. It does have a very nice screen. I do like the graphics, and I do like the, uh, the colors, everything. You do have two screens that you go through to get to the unit, as opposed to the 595, which only had one screen. You have to accept this user end user agreement and then you also have to you know accept a little warning and then it brings up the standard uh, Zumo screen very similar to the 595 it has a few more little icons showing up here it's got a couple of extra things that you don't have on the 595 but we'll get into that in more detail later but it is very touch sensitive I've tried it with gloves it works very well with gloves and so this is very familiar interface to what you had on the 595. There are a few little differences, which I'll get into later, uh, but this is pretty much it right now. So let's compare this Zumo XT with your built-in GPS on your 2018 Plus Honda Goldwing. What are the advantages of this over that, or are there any? Well, the, the advantage, first advantage, I like the graphics better. I think the map graphics are more 
logical, and I think they're just better quality graphics. Now, you'll see more of this as I'm doing an actual ride. The other advantage is the touch screen allows you to do anything on the GPS while you're riding. Uh, whereas some of the functions of the GPS on the Goldwing are disabled when the bike is in motion. Uh, the Garmin allows you to um, you know, find a location or do all kinds of things with your route um, without having to stop the bike and make sure the bike's not in motion. That's a big advantage. Um, it's just a great touch screen. It's very sensitive. Just having a touch screen is a is a big advantage. You also have better routing capabilities. You can use Garmin's Basecamp on your computer to uh, design a route with waypoints and you have a lot of customization and control that you don't have with the Goldwing GPS. You can do some routing offline on the Goldwing, but it's very clunky, very hard to upload the routes, and the waypoint information is very sketchy. Um, and there's just more apps. There's a lot of apps available on this Garmin XT uh, that you don't have with the, uh, uh, with the Honda model. The Garmin interface, just in general, is much more intuitive and just more logical than the Honda GPS, which comes from a company called Harman. But just to give you a quick example of the logical interface, let's say you want to set your home location. All you have to do on the Garmin is click Go Home. In three quarters of a mile, turn left on Rita Drive. Now, I've already programmed this with my home address. But basically, all you have to do is hit go home the first time and it will ask you for your home address. Any of you that have the Honda Goldwing GPS, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's very complicated just to figure out how to set your home location or to update the home location. And let's say you want to edit your home location. Every time I have to do that on the Honda GPS, I literally have to go get out the manual and read up on it because it's so complicated. On the Garmin system, if you click where to, you have the little hamburger menu up here on the left. Click that and it asks you to set your home location or you can restore a home location. If I say set location, I can enter an address. I can use the current location where the bike is or the GPS is, or I can enter any of the recently found locations. And while we have the keyboard up on the screen, let me uh, talk a little bit about how Garmin interface is for the keyboard. I'm not crazy about it, but I understand why they have to do it this way. They've basically taken a QWERTY keyboard, and you can... Uh, you know, basically what they're doing is they're splitting the keyboard in half. Now, when it comes to numbers, it's pretty easy. I can enter 4489, and then it's going to say done, and now I enter the street name. Now, when it comes time to enter the street name, you'll see the keyboard is split in half. I've got half the letters on the screen. If I zip over here, I've got the right side of the keyboard. And the reason they do that is because they want to make these buttons large enough where you can use a glove. If you've got a glove on, uh, you're going to need larger buttons to do that. But it is a little bit clunky. It takes a little getting used to. In this case, I'm just going to enter. Now I have to go back to get to the G. And you'll notice it gives you some suggestions across the top here. Uh, probably based on your current location. For some reason, it's not picking up Young Drive, which is where I'm located. We'll enter a space, and we'll do DR. And now you do see Young Drive up here, so I'm going to click that. And it's now going out in Texas and Oklahoma and looking for an address, 4489 Young Drive. So it found one in Carrollton, Texas, which is where I'm located. It also found one in Lockhart, Texas on Young Lane, so it gets close, but that's 225 miles away. So let's go ahead and click 
4489 Young Drive. Now, what this is doing is once I hit select, that's going to choose that as my home location. So let's just hit select, and now that is my new home location. Another thing that's very easy to do with the uh, Garmin system is to stop a route or end a route. So currently, it's got me going to 4489 Young Drive. If I go back to the home screen, all I have to do is hit stop, and it will stop that route. Now, I am no longer on a route. Much easier than the Goldwing system. Now, if I'm going to compare this to the Garmin 595 LM, what are the advantages? First of all, you've got the larger screen size. It's five and a half inches diagonal compared to uh, five inches on the Zumo 595. Uh, it has a brighter display. Now, I'm anxious to try this in daylight conditions. Um, the biggest complaint people had with the 595 is that on a bright sunny day, the screen could be a little hard to see. This screen does appear to be very, very bright, much brighter. There are also some more apps available on this model that aren't available on the 595. Also, it appears to me that they've really designed this uh, with the adventure rider in mind. So for those of you BMW guys out there or um, other adventure bike riders, this model seems to be really geared towards the adventure market because it's got a lot of off-road capabilities, the ability to connect to satellite uh, communicators, and it's uh, supposed to be very rugged in its uh, design to be able to take the abuse of off-road riding. So that might be an advantage to you. Um, if you already own a 590 or a 595, uh, unless you're an adventure rider, I don't know that there would be a compelling reason to update or upgrade to this uh, XT, because in my opinion, the 595 is an excellent GPS. I'm very happy with mine. In fact, I love it. Uh, the interface is very similar, so you're not going to see huge differences in how the, the system functions and operates. There are some differences, but it's not enough uh, to where you might want to completely reinstall a new uh, harness and relearn everything from the ground up. The 595 and the 590 are excellent GPSs, as is the 660. Also, if you're interested in the Garmin Zumo XT, I will put a link in the description down below uh, where you can order this through Amazon.com and you can check out those links in the description of this video. Uh, one other feature that you have with this XT that's kind of cool is you have different orientations. So you can use it in like a cell phone mode. Uh, and it changes uh, the orientation of the screen automatically. And when you turn it back horizontally, it flips the screen uh, to a landscape view. Just kind of a cool feature. In case you're out, you know, walking around a town and you're using this for uh, a GPS, like I say, it's not much bigger than a cell phone. So you could easily slip this in your pocket and take it with you. And if you don't want to look at it this way, you just simply hold it like a cell phone and it will uh, change your orientation. Very cool. Thanks again for joining me today on Cruise Man's Garage. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to click the subscribe button down below. And if you click the little bell icon, YouTube will notify you when we come out with new videos. Thanks again for joining us on Cruise Man's Garage.